Presentation of the histological preparations for the intermediate exam 3. This presentation should help you to remember the preparations, but not substitute the review of the original preparations in microscope before the exam. Look at your schedule to see the histological preparations at the department before the exam. The section of bone marrow. At low magnification, you see numerous adipose cells and megakaryocytes. Adipose cells, megakaryocytes. with large lobulated nuclei and other cells also belong to Parenheim to blood cells, developing blood cells cells at different stage of development. Between adipose cells you can also find the reticular cells belong to reticular tissue compose the stroma of bone marrow. Thymus is parenchymal organ consists of stroma and parenchyma stroma represented by thin connective tissue capsule and connective tissue layer dividing organ for lobules every lobule consists of peripheral dark part, cortex, and lighter central part, medulla. The strom of every lobule also composed by epithelial reticular tissue. This Blue dots are T lymphocytes. In medulla, there are few T lymphocytes. You can find here the gasal bodies, the lamellary thymus bodies composed by epithelial reticular tissue. The antigen independent proliferation and differentiation of T lymphocytes take place here. They developed from T lymphocytes precursors which come here from red bone marrow with blood. Lymph node, also a parenchymal organ, belong to system of hemopiasis and immunogenesis. It's peripheral organ of this system. It's also parenchymal organ consists of stroma and parenchyma. Stroma represented by connective tissue capsule and connective tissue layers. 
The stroma represent also by reticular tissue consist of reticular cells and fibers. The parenchyme represented by T and B lymphocytes. There is the peripheral darker part cortex and central light part medulla. The cortex in the cortex located the lymphoid follicles. It's accumulation of B lymphocytes. This light central part geminal center or active center of follicle. The follicle located in one plane, in one row under the capsule. And in medulla there are medulla records. Here in medulla you can find at high magnification also the reticular cells. Lymphoid follicles and medullary cords is B-dependent zones, uh, B-dependent zones. In between here is T-dependent paracortical zone. The lymph flow through the knee lymph node on the lymphatic sinuses. Subcapsula intermediate cortical between trabecules and follicles then central sinuses and then efferent lymphatic vessel. Spleen, also peripheral organ of hemopoietin immunogenesis. Its parenchymal organ consists of thick capsule and trabecules with blood vessels, its stroma, and parenchym represented by white and red pulp. White pulp represented by numerous lymphoid follicles distributed irregularly in the spleen. These follicles quite similar to the lymphoid follicles nodules of lymph node. Also there is germinal center, lighter central part, but at the periphery located is a small artery, the unusual called central artery. And stroma of spleen is reticular tissue. Additional stroma. And you can find reticular cells here. Between follicles 
and trabecules, there is a red pulp. Red because a lot of erythrocytes which come here to die. The old aged erythrocytes. It's here like the cemetery for erythrocytes and platelets. And also he located a sinusoid blood capillaries. Endocrine system, hypophysis, low magnification, hypothalamus with third ventricle and median eminence. Hypophysis is parenchymal organ, consists of stroma and parenchyma. Stroma composed by connective tissue capsule around and connective tissue layer. Parenchyma represented by epithelial secretory endocrine cells here and here and in pastoral lobe the specific nerve tissue so hypophysis con consists of th three lobules anterior the thickest the darkest intermediate the smallest narrow and posterior consist of nerve tissue n n nerve n neuro hypophysis it called and anterior and intermediate part together called adena hypophysis has epithelial origin and between epophysal cleft At high magnification in the anterior lobe, you can see acidophilic and basophilic cells, as well as chromophobic, numerous unstained cells between. In the intermediate lobe, there are small follicles, the accumulation of secret accumulation of gamons between endocrine cells and in posterior lobe in neurohypophysis you can see the small cell glial cells sites from what pituitary gland it's hypothesis. Pteroid gland, the peripheral endocrine organ, parenchymal organ covered by connective tissue capsule and connective tissue layers going to the deeper part. In connective tissue layers, you can find arteries and veins, and parenchyma represented by epithelial endocrine cells. This is a structural and fu functional unit of parenchyma is follicle. The follicle is vesicle, leaning by simple cuboidal epithelium. Inside, colloid, tyroglobulin, which destroyed by tyrocytes. And you can see the resorptive vacuoles. between cells and colloid. A 
between follicles you can find islets interfollicular cells she cells and numerous blood capillaries which surrounding every follicle and here in some preparation you can see occasional sections of parotiroid gland parotiroid gland is parenchymal organ consists of capsule and connective tissue layers under capsule and in stroma connective tissue septa you can see a lot of adipose tissue parenchym represented by endocrine cells cords This is another peripheral endocrine gland, adrenal gland. Parenchymal organ covered by capsule and connective tissue layers. Parenchyme represented by epithelial endocrine cells. Adrenal gland consists of peripheral cortex and central medulla. This is a connective tissue capsule around and three zone of cortex. Zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, the lightest part and zona reticularis in some preparation you can see the darker pseudonophobic layer where the stem and cambial cells located which divide in mitotically and replace the aged cells of zona fasciculata and reticularis for zona glomerulosa somewhere here on the capsule is special additional germinal zone medulla represented by Chromaffin cells, dark and light, produce adrenaline and noradrenaline. You can see a lot of blood vessels between endocrine cells. Digestive system, tan, filiform and fungiform tan papilla. You see the mucous membrane, epithelium, stratified, squamous, non keratinized, and in filiform papilla, partly keratinized epithelium. You see the papilla connective tissue core represented by loose connective tissue and in the deeper part of the turn you can see the skeletal muscle fibers going in all three directions these adipose tissue between 
This foliage turned popular with taste buds. Mucous membrane foliage popular. Skeletal muscle and packages of secretory portions of cellular glands. Serol cellular glands in this case. They are ducts which release saliva at the surface of tongue, adipose tissue, and at high magnification, you see stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium which cover the folate papilla and taste buds occupy the whole thickness of the epithelium connective tissue core palatin tonsil you see the crypt leading by stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium like continuation of the epithelium of oral cavity but here it much darker it infiltrated by lymphocytes and other epithelium not and there are numerous lymphoid follicles with germinal centers Located under epithelium in lamina propria. These are B and T dependent zone. Here, the antigen dependent proliferation and differentiation of lymphocytes take place. These scripts and follicles belong to the Mucosa associated part of lymphoid tissue. It's like diffuse part of the system of hemopoiesis and immunogenesis. These preparations you can see sometimes mucose cellular glands and adipose tissue. Parotid cellular gland is typical parenchymal organ consists of stroma and parenchyma. Stroma represented by connective tissue capsule and connective tissue layers dividing organ for lobules. In this scepter you can find the interlobular ducts leaning by stratified epithelium compared with these blood vessels, these arteries. The structure significantly differ. Inside lobal you see parenchyme represented by secretory epithelium which form the serous secretory portions. You can find intercalated ducts, the smallest ducts and bigger straight ducts here, here and here. This is submandibular cellular glands. You can see here the numerous mixed secretory portions. They mostly mucose, but one side covered by the layers of 
σιρόλς, οξυφίλικ σιρόλς, σεκρετορι σιρόλς. This is a straighted duct. Tooth consists of crown, neck, and root. There is the pulpar cavity in the center. This declassified tooth, therefore, no enamel here available. Dense, another dense tissue, dentine, and cementum around the root. At high magnification, you can see the remnants of the pulp and periodontum. You see the dentine tubules where the long processes of odontoblasts located in pulp. Is situated. This is cementum in consists of two parts cellular and uncellular. If you see the cementocytes cells with processes like osteocytes in bone marrow. It's cellular cementum. If no, it's uncellular cementum. Esophagus transverse section is typical tubular line organ consists of three membranes the inner mucous membrane, middle muscular and outer serous membrane. There are four layers in mucous membrane. Surface epithelium, stratified squamous non-keratinized, lamina propria, loose connective tissue, lamina muscularis, consist of bundles, bundles of smooth muscle cells. Submucosa, where the secretory portions of esophagus proper glands located. As you can see, they are completely mucose, filled by a light mucous secret which push the nuclei at the periphery to the basal membrane and they become flat and road shape at the section. You can see also the ducts of the glands. Muscle membrane consists of inner circular and outer longitudinal layer serous membrane passage from esophagus to stomach and you can see the point where the stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium of esophagus transit to simple columnar secretory epithelium of cardiac part of the stomach. 
and you can see the deep gastric pits and short cardiac glands. And here the proper glands of esophagus still exist. So here is the surface epithelium, lamina propria, lamina muscularis, submucosa, muscle membrane, and serous membrane. Fundus of stomach. Stomach wall consists of usual three membranes, inner mucous membrane, muscle membrane, and serous membrane. In the mucous membrane, the epithelium have invaginations, gastric pits. In lamina propria, there are numerous tubular glands, proper glands, lamina muscularis submucosa. At high magnification in proper glands, you can see violet or blue. Chief cells which produce pepsinogen, they're located in the middle of glands, in their bodies and bottoms, and around a large origin. Cells like vesicles, its parietal cells, they produce, produce ions of hydrogen and chloride, which will combine into hydrochloric acid. Pylorus of stomach. Mucous membrane contain a extremely deep gastric pits, but very short pyloric glands. The epithelium simple columna secretory and pyloric glands consist of mucous secreting cells. Mostly. A very thick muscle membrane. Duodenum consist uh, of mucous membrane, muscle membrane, and serous membrane. Mucous membrane produces a thing-like extensions, villi, and tubular invaginations, crypts. Epithelium is simple columna secretory and epithelium in the villa in between cribs located lamina propria, loose connective tissue, then lamina muscularis, then submucosa, where the secretory portions of duodenal glands located. 
the mostly mukos, but there are some serous secretory portions. Small intestine, eunum. Mucous membrane, muscle and serous membrane. In mucous membrane, villi, long villi and crypts. In submucous, no duodenal glands. In the epithelium of villi, much more goblet cells as compared to duodenum. And you can see the brush border on the surface of epithelial cells. Crypts. Here located panad cells. And here at this level undifferentiated cells. Large intestine, mucous membrane, muscle and serous membrane. Mucous membrane compose crypts. They were large. No villus in epithelium in addition to columnar absorptive cells, cells there are a lot of goblet cells like vesicles they produce the mucus which release into the lumen and cover the surface of large intestine. between lamina propria and lamina muscularis and in submucosa you can see the large blood vessels artery and vein. Here you can find also submucous ganglia, autonomic nerve ganglia of submucous nerve plexus. And this is main teric ganglia between layers of muscle membrane and again figures of mitosis belong to cambial undifferentiated cells liver Consist of liver lobules. It contains the central vein in the center. Ah, this is capsule. Thick capsule belong to stroma. Connective tissue layers very thin in human. Here, between lobules, located the traits. This is the central vein. Hepatic tubercles consist of hepatocytes with sinusoid blood capillaries between. And this is a hepatic triad, consists of interlobular artery, vein, and bile duct. Pancreas, parenchymal organ covered by capsule, and layers of connective tissue dividing organ for lobules and here you can see the large interlobular 
duct it have magnification you can see nicely the secretory portions of endocrine part of the pancreas they called acini every acinus contain the basophil gomogenous zone in the periphery and lighter oxyphilic zymogen zone in the center. This is intralobular duct and in lobal between arsenic you see the isolated largen guns belong to endocrine portion of pancreas.